For those serious about becoming successful, consistently profitable options traders, now is the time to build skills in technical analysis, market analysis, and applied volatility to get those results. We have multiple memberships, starting with our Go membership that teaches rules-based trading and our Pro membership that teaches more subjective trading. For more information, go to LockInYourSuccess.com slash memberships. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our special Market Outlook open house for September 25th, 2023. Before we get going, I'd like to remind you the presentations for educational purposes only. We're not broker dealers or financial advisors, and we're not making any specific trade recommendations. Also, please be aware your risk in trading options is substantial. Please make sure you are aware of all your risks prior to placing any trades. Let's move forward here. And uh, we didn't have any questions into the forum, so we're just going to jump in and talk about our open house week for pro members. So, our pro membership open house week is going on. Uh, the, our pro members or our, or our go members that are attending the pro membership open house uh, are receiving, they received the pro meeting for 918. We have this 925 market outlook and then our 927 trading to win webinar. So hope you were enjoying that. Also, this is a special market outlook open house where we are um, having on our special guests. So welcome, he, uh, welcome to our open house. Uh, also worthy of mention, we have the M3.4U trading strategy that is currently running on sale. So anybody interested in that, and uh, just go to our website, LockingYourSuccess.com, look up trading strategy courses, and you can take a look at what we have going on there. Uh, also, we have our live seminar coming up in January 18th and 19th, Trading to Win. We do a limited capacity. We're going to be in Orlando, Florida. It's going to be a great time. Hopefully you can join us. And you, to get to that, you just go to our website, LockingYourSuccess.com, and you get a pop-up for that, and you can check out the details there. Uh, also, whether you've uh, uh, mentioned, our membership for October is now open as well. So anybody who's interested in joining any of our membership, now is the time to do it. Okay, so let's take a look at what's going on in the markets and so forth. I'm going to jump in here. First of all, um, I want to talk about Market Outlook a little bit because we have our, our members on um, and our special guests. Market Outlook is a webinar series, a uh, learning series that I put together to help our traders understand price action and implied volatility action in the marketplace so that they can make much better trading decisions and make money more consistently and uh, with much better knowledge and know how to modify their positions and so forth as we go along and as new information comes in the marketplace. A uh, big mistake people make about technical analysis is they think that, you know, we use it to determine direction and maybe in a sense that's partially true, but that's not really the point of the whole exercise. The whole exercise is understanding what's going on in the marketplace and knowing um, when there's, it's good It's good to use for directional purposes. For example, if you ever study day trading, they have this thing called, this list called stocks in play. Stocks in play are essentially stocks that have price pattern movements that are highly predictable, right? So they'll look across, they'll have some sort of a filter. Most day traders will have some sort of a filter and they'll look across the marketplace and the filter picks out high probability setups, right? So that's price action in the marketplace that has a very high probability of doing certain things. So what that tells us, right, is that sometimes price action is highly predictable and other times it's not. And when you're coming in looking at a singular asset like this, like SPX, um, Sometimes the SPX is what we call in play. Sometimes it's not. Uh, and when it is in play, we take advantage of that. And, you know, when we see chart patterns set up that have very highly predictable price movements, then we can use that information to modify our already high probability trades or in whatever manner we want, if we want to go directional or whatever, so that we can um, make more money more quickly with less risk in the marketplace. And then when those chart patterns are not in play, 
so to speak, where they're not really telling us a whole lot, which are, which is, you know, sometimes that's the case. Um, when that's happening, then we default back or put a little bit more pressure, I guess, or, or we lean towards our more non-subjective, non-directional strategies. So we're constantly flipping back and forth. And we'll talk about this. We talk about this more in the trading to win webinar that we have um, in our pro membership, a little bit more on how to apply technicals and when to really lean on them heavily and when not to lean on them so heavily and so forth. And perhaps one of the most important things, which we're actually going to talk about today is when we have opinion changes in the marketplace. In other words, what constitutes an opinion change? Because in, when it comes down to a support and resistance levels, they're they should not be used for the purpose or certainly not for the sole purpose of choosing the next direction in the marketplace, which is what a lot of people try to use them for. And that's, that's, it would be what I would call an improper use of the techniques and an improper use of technicals. And then they wonder why, you know, they kind of have a 50, 50 hit rate on whether the support or resistance level holds. The reality is, is we, we need to look at support and resistance levels as important levels in the marketplace. And then our directional bias off of that important level is going to be dependent on many other factors. And then once we miss, meet or have some sort of a directional bias at that point, then uh, we want to monitor that directional bias to see if it is playing out because a bullish market behaves a certain way. If the market's going to, if the price is going to follow through, it behaves a certain way. A bearish market behaves a certain way. The price is going to follow through, it behaves a certain way. And um, if we understand what that is, we can then take our important levels and then choose some sort of a direction off it, monitor our thought on that direction, and then switch that opinion if bearish action comes into the marketplace. So um, it's a very, very important skill to have if you want to rely on trading as an income. And it really, really can, like I said, um, help you with your results, create the uh, higher profits when the market action is predictable, help you get out of positions that may be problematic when the market situation appears as though it's going to be changing and so forth. Okay, so what I'd like to do is um, we have some new people on, so talk about last week. So this is what we look like um, last Friday, uh, I guess last market outlook which was Monday morning before the open. This is still bullish price action in the marketplace. So if I have to make an opinion of, you know, say it's this day here and I have to have a thought of how I want to be positioned in the marketplace, I'd be positioned a little bit towards the bullish side. Now, I wouldn't necessarily be strongly positioned bullish because you can see that we are getting to the point where the price action is and we didn't make a new high here, which was expected, right? So uh, in our market outlooks of the past, we expected the market to come up into here and then to reverse off of there down to about here, which it did. We expected a bounce off of that, which it did. Uh, we expected it to come up and retest the bottom end of this range, which it did, right? So markets acting very predictably up until that point. Here, we still have that expectation, or I guess my primary expectation would be one of two things here. We're kind of in the middle of a range. Predominantly, I have to lean towards the bullish side. Price action is still good. This bigger down bar is a bit of a warning sign, but in the context of, hey, we think the SPX is kind of going to go sideways a little bit and then probably break out to the upside. In that context, everything is still pretty much in play here. So generally, I'd be leaning a little bit bullish in my positions. If I had a bull trade on, I wouldn't really worry about it or, or anything that's, that's maybe a little bit positive delta. It wouldn't be too much of a concern. Let's see or watch the price action come into the marketplace and see what happens. Okay. So I'm coming in here and things are moving along. We had a bit of an up day here on Monday. We had a bit of a down day here on Tuesday, but the price action is still bullish. This is a bullish candle. This sets me in for, like, if I think I'm going to be sideways ranged here, then basically I want to see a bullish candle here. This retest really isn't a concern. Um, from here, 
our expectation is any movement should not at should not penetrate the low side of this candle, any price action, especially at close. And we would expect <clears throat> the most likely move is probably a move back up to a resistance level up here of around 4536. So no concern, still bullish bias. When this comes into the market, that changes everything. Okay. This here is, it pretty much wipes out my initial thought so my initial thought here on this day was that we're essentially going to hold the upper range of this. So if I took this price action here and I split it in half, okay, this is my, my halfway point comes in right around, let me click here. And I know this might be a little small for some of you guys who will zoom in later. Actually, I can zoom in now. Um, but my price action here has an upper and lower half, right? You have the low, we have the high, we have the middle. The market a lot of times will use the middle as a support or resistance level or an important area under which the buyers and sellers are going to determine direction. So my thought on this was that we're pretty much going to hold the upper range here. This is a clear, strong penetration into the lower range. That being the case, the most probable price movement has flipped. Okay, so as new information comes to the marketplace, you want to understand that. The most probable price movement is flipped. Now the most probable price movement is to probably this low or this low here. That being the case, you know, if I can maintain bullish positions if I still think the market's going to be sideways, but I want to analyze those positions and make sure that if the market comes down out of this range, it's really not going to be problematic to me. Because over the longer term, I may be still thinking that the market's not going down. I may be still generally bullish in the marketplace, but my short-term charts are at this point are telling me that we're coming down probably at least to here, right? And you know, either this swing low here or this swing low here would be a pretty um, normal move, which is like 43.22. So if I'm in a trading strategy that that's gonna be problematic with, I wanna pop out of the trade or switch the trade, or do something to be able to accommodate the price movement down into this range, um, because that's that's the most likely probable, or the most likely price movement at this time as information comes into the marketplace. And then we get um, the following day, and if I'm a very short-term trader, this gap down was extremely predictable price move in the market. Like I said, we had, this is a bearish close in the marketplace, we broke range, we got to the lower range, very high probability we're coming down here. This is a very high probability gap down trade or um, when the market opens to continue and, and and let the market continue down. Then we come into here and then we have the rest of the week. So a couple of things going on that um, I want to talk about. Our shorter term traders or people looking at shorter term charts might think this is extremely bearish. I'm going to flip over to a different drawing set. One of the things we want to do when we get a conditions change is look at a different drawing set and clean things up a little bit. So if I go into this here, this is longer term thoughts on marketplace. So we have a pivot range here. Okay, so just like we were talking before, we have a look, we have a, we have a price movement of a certain width. We have about the center or a pivot range of that that price movement. Pivot range of that price movement is pretty much where this blue area is right in here, right? This is going to be the central range on just like we were talking about the short term. Um, just like we talk about. The um, like I said, the the uh, the short term chart, the long term charts are the same thing. They just play out differently. So we have our central point, which is probably if I was gonna pick that, pick an exact point, which these are often ranges, and this is a range. But if I was gonna pick an exact point here, and or the most important area of the pivot point, I would probably call it here, right? Um, just lighten that up so you can see it. I'd probably call it there. That would be our, our most relevant point on our longer term charts. So I'm going to tend to remain bullish 
in general, right? So time frame is extremely important when we start talking about technicals. I'm in a three-day trade. I'm not being bullish. If I'm in a 70-day day rate, a 65-day trade, I'm probably scaling in bullish here because the most likely price movement with that breakdown is that we're going to move into this zone and really anywhere in this zone is a, re is a reversal point. This is probably the most significant point. Like if we hit 20, 42, 30, 42, 25, I'm looking at maybe being fairly strongly bullish. Certainly as we get deeper, I'm bullish, bullish, bullish. We break down clearly into lower range. I have to switch my opinion because that's new information coming into the marketplace. Okay, now we're coming down to, now we're in a lower half and now we're coming down to something that's going to be significantly lower. But here, my overall bias at any support level, right? So now, now we're bringing, I, I said earlier, support and resistance levels don't determine direction. What it does is other, other factors. As we come into these levels here, I want to be biased bullish on my support levels and then looking for evidence that, the, that I'm wrong or that the market is going to break down and have that fail. So just like I was bullish bias here, so I might enter some bullish positions. This candle here on the 20th tells me, no, no, that is, that's not going to happen. Um, we're likely to go down to here. I have to cancel that bullish bias out. And then my next place of bullish bias is down here, anywhere in this zone here, which is where we are now. Um, so I, I want to maybe be, but I'm not going to be like strongly bullish at these levels because like I said, um, this is just the range that we're likely to bottom and we're likely to reverse. Definitely willing to take on some risk if the market gets down here to the downside. Here, I'm going to be neutral, bullish, leaning. So as the market comes down, I want to maintain a somewhat bullish bias because when we finally bounce off of the whatever level we have in here that the market's going to pick. Like I said, sometimes they're in play, sometimes they're not. We're really not in play right now. We were in play bearish here on Wednesday. We're in play down to this point. Now we have to start leaning bullish. But if I'm day trading, I'm not taking a bullish trade necessarily because my short-term charts are still very bearish. Uh, I'm looking for some sort of evidence. I think right now the most likely bottoming point is we have a downtrend line here. We have um, coming into our major zone. Right now, probably right into here is probably the next point at which I would maybe take a bullish opinion on the marketplace. A breakdown of that would probably cause me to scale into bullishness all the way down uh, on the way down. But not. But again, I'm keeping this time frame appropriate. I'm going bullish off this level. I'm not doing a day trade. I'm not doing a 10-day trade. I'm not doing a 15-day trade. I'm talking like 40, 50 days. It allows the market to come down into this range here without really having too much trouble with the position and then waiting for the bounce. And then of course, if I get failure signals at that point, then we know we're going down and we may end up flipping our opinion at that point. So that's kind of how um, we like to uh, look at that. Some of our traders might look at this as, well, first of all, I have this as like a head and shoulders pattern with a neckline here and a support level here. Technical analysis is a self-fulfilling prophecy that works because a lot of traders say that, see the same thing. When we're set up in situations where a lot of traders see the same thing, we get some very high probability moves to play out in the marketplace. When it's kind of mixed and different traders see different things, that's when probabilities go away. We want to rely back on the strategy itself. So um, some people will see this here as a neckline on a head and shoulders position. And if I just activate this, color this out as say green, thicken it up a little bit. They'll see that and they'll see that as head and shoulders pattern break. And they'll expect a break. You'll, you can set in your price patterns from there and you can expect your breakdown area from that point, right? And I'm not going to go through that process right now. So my point being, they'll see this as very bearish. And um, while we agree with that, context, that context, we also have to be aware that other people are seeing this differently. Um, also, 
that we're coming into a long-term support zone. Our long-term chart patterns always are more important, or, uh, should be weighed he more heavily than our shorter-term price patterns. So I have a shorter-term price pattern that's breaking down into a longer-term price, uh, longer price movement scenario that should be bullish. So that being the case, um, my predominant opinion should still lean for sh maybe some short-term bearishness into an important level, maybe a more significant level, but um, ultimately my expectation would be for my long-term chart to work out and to go higher, right? So it's for this to bottom and, and to go higher, okay? So I just wanted to say that on that. And again, if we're looking at very short-term charts, which is you know, our 90-day hourly, this is clearly a breakdown here that happened on Friday. And that would put us with a minimum down price pattern target I could just come off of, if I call this a range here, that puts us down into like 4150 range for that pattern. If I was looking at this and, you know, say this was an all time high and there was really no significant support level here, then this would be a very clear breakdown and a very good trade actually down into this range in here. But, um, but the, Longer term reversal area likely being in this range, I I, I can't I, I can play that if I want to, but I can't I can't take that like super seriously because from a longer term perspective, this is good to re reverse at any point. So I'm going to look for evidence of that happening, and if it does, and we'll let that play out. We also have a price pattern like um, on our short term charts here on our hourlies. This breakdown is also fairly significant, so we could see this breakdown coming a little bit earlier which is right in here. This was uh, another breakdown signal, which happened, what day was this? This is on the 15th, or whatever day of the week that was, uh, on Friday. So we actually did get a breakdown signal on Friday if you're looking at our short-term charts. I did not take that seriously because realistically the price pattern target for this breakdown is actually right in, um, well, if I take this from here to here, we have 44 to uh, 5 it's 140 points off of this. So uh, that's going to be 4330. 4330s are basically our breakdown target. So um, 4330 does not, uh, which is right here. 4330 does not constitute a break of my longer term range. Matter of fact, it puts us in a bullish area. So um, that's not that significant. This one here is more significant because then if I do the pattern off my bigger numbers, that probably brings us, I, I haven't run the numbers, but it probably brings us down into like a 4,100 area or something like that as a guess. Again, our longer term charts are more important, so we want to pay attention to that. So question here is, does the fact that this big candle occurs on the Fed day change your opinion? So here's the thing about news is new... It doesn't matter if it's Fed Day or any other day in the marketplace. When we get a um, um, handle that breaks an import, a significant um, a significant level, right? So, in other words, in this case here, we had a candle that broke what I would call, in the time frame I'm trading, a significant. Um, technical level. So we broke a support level <clears throat> with a fairly large red candle. We decided, in other words, we decisively broke a support level with a, with a candle at that point there, that's, that switches us from bullishness to bearishness. Had we had that candle and it didn't break an important level, it doesn't really matter whether it was on news or not. It doesn't really matter. Often you will see switches in opinion in the marketplace or, or change in direction of the traders during a news event. The market tends to trade to an important level leading up to the news event, and it tends to either confirm that level or break that level. Uh, in this case here, it broke that level. It broke it in a manner that changed um, our initial thought on where the market was going to go. And that happened on this day here. And this was really our our last defense here on our initial thesis, right? Because we had, again, if I just clear this out completely,
Let me just clear drawing set. If I just clear this out completely, we have, and we look at this range, we have basically an important level like right in here, which might be a little bit wider than that. We put the center of that level where we want. If I had to pick the most precise point, which a lot of times I'll do, um, it would probably be something like here, right? I can also Fibonacci this out if I want to kind of get an idea of where my center point is. So I can come here and I can come in here. I can my properties. I can stick in a 150 and make it uh, blue, for example. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I, uh, it'd be a 50%. Let me do 50%. And I can make it blue. And this kind of gives me a 50% range. The upper range is a little bit bigger than the lower range. But this is also, um, it's important just because it marks kind of like where the center of that range is. And I like to know if I'm over that or under that. And here we're kind of testing that. Um, so... For a Fibonacci standpoint, this is my level. So this goes back to what are the Fibonacci traders looking at? What are the support and resistance traders looking at? What are the people on the weekly chart looking at? What are the people on the daily chart looking at? What are the people on the hourly chart looking at? Um, I'm looking at this as the most significant level for me. Um, interestingly enough, head and shoulders breakdown occurred on, in our short-term charts, actually occurred and it broke down under the 50% level. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but here, this is a bullish candle. Expectation is market up. This cancels that bullish candle, candle out. This decisively puts us in the lower range. That decisively means that we're very likely to come down at least this swing low, probably to this swing low. Uh, and then I have other things that we're looking at that we saw on that chart earlier that actually puts the bottom level maybe a little bit lower here. And that, of course, I should be aware I'm coming into the longer term support area down in here. And I want to take that seriously also. So those are the things that we're looking at. Those are the opinion shifts. Right now, I'm looking for the market to bottom out somewhere between a little bit lower than where we are now and this area here, which also coincides with a 200-day moving average or is pretty close to that. And then we'll likely reverse back to the upside. Okay. Uh, but that's my predominant thoughts on the SPX. If we correlate this into some of our other indexes, because we want to see if our other indexes are doing the same thing. Uh, let me just go to NDX for a minute here. This was, to me, this was a fairly important day in the NDX, right? We tried to hold it this day here. We had a breakdown here. Also happened to be Fed day. So we can see the NDX is putting in a similar pattern. We can see the start of a breakdown right here, uh, but this day on the 15th on Friday, again, I didn't take that overly seriously. We're coming into a more major trend line. We kind of held that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, that decisively broke down. The little price pattern target on that, it basically brings us to here. Um, a move down into this range wouldn't be, uh, to the swing low wouldn't be overly surprising on the NDX, kind of in the same boat here. This is bearish price action, but really only to about here. Um, we don't have a whole lot of support in the NDX. I don't think we even do in the weeklies here. What do we got? Oh, we got a level here, right? So up here at 44, 14.4 approximately is a decent support point. Judging with what the SPX is doing, that's probably where we're probably going to go. It's probably right around 14.4. Um, that's what it looks like on the weekly, if this breaks down. So this is a support area. We might penetrate this and bounce it today. That would be fairly bullish. Okay, so you know, sitting at this in isolation, we can be bullish off this level or... I would tend to lean bullish off the index. We have, we have, uh, we're in an overall uptrend. Yes, the uptrend is transitioning into a sideways trend. Um, but realistically, this is an area where we could go a little bit bullish, but it's not like a super strong support area. 
down in here, you're definitely wanting to take, um, you want to lean everything bullish down. We get down to, you know, about like 13,850. Um, I'm definitely leaning everything bullish at that point. This here is kind of an indecisive point. I kind of want to see, you know, whether this area down in here holds this relatively weak support area. You know, for, it could really turn anywhere. 14.5, 14.4, we talked about that number. This is um, a number here, 14.2. Same type of thing. So I'm in the same type of situation I am. I, I, I don't really want to rely too heavily on the technicals right now because they're kind of in the middle of nowhere. Uh, but I do want to be aware that we are coming into an area here. The further we go down, the more likely we are to go up. Um, so I want to keep that in mind on anything that's longer term. Okay. And then, um, if we go into just the dial really quick. Mm -hmm. See the breakdown here. Wednesday kind of held okay on the Dow. This wasn't really much of a problem, but Thursday confirmed the breakdown. Um, important levels in the Dow. This is kind of a mess, so we don't really have anything really good there to really key off of. Let's see here. Right down back into range. Actually, this is a nice point here. We get rid of this. Um, this is a pretty nice point on the Dow, like right in here, because we've got a lot of lows for weeklies. We have some reaction off of that area. So right in here, it's actually a pretty nice price area for the Dow. And again, we have a lot of zones, but this is it, this is a representation of a mess, so to speak. So this here, this here is, is a is a good level where we might expect the Dow to bounce. So we're coming into that level with the Dow also. Um, again, in the context, is that's kind of messy. I mean, the charts are the charts. This is a level. We get the same thing, right? So we get a a breakdown here this head and shoulders pattern gives us a price pattern target. And if, I, if you want to figure out a price pattern target, it's like, I'm just going to do this in my head really quick. And I might be way off, but um, like 33.8 to 35.8. So that's, that's what, that's 3000 points, right? 33 to 35, that's 3000 points. 3000 points off of this is like 31 ish which brings us down into here. So our price pattern target off of this is down into here. Um, however, I do want to keep in mind that um, this is a very highly potential reversal area right in here. So we'll, we'll, we'll want to watch this for a bounce and a reversal. We break down that area, then you know we, we have to look at levels lower. Okay, and then Russell here. looks like this again this is kind of a mess if i shift out to weeklies uh, let me just go to let me go to something that's clear more clear here I see this as an important area. So this is something we marked out before. We also see this as an important area right in here. Um, 1715. We have our head and shoulders breakdown. Oops. That you can see here, which again, if they're not in an important area, I don't usually take those that seriously, but I know some traders are looking at that. We have the breakdown there. We have a price pattern target off of that of 1820 to 18 to... 2010, that's 90 points off of what's the approximate location of that? How about that puts us at what? 1760 ish. 1760 is like right around, right around where we are now. So we have price pattern targets here. We have a diagonal up in here. 
So right around here is where this looks like this is probably going to want to turn uh, right about 1740 or so. Let's see if that confirms out on something shorter term. All right, so we would measure this out, measure the break. So those who don't know price pattern target, uh, like a head and shoulders, for example, we measure this out, measure from here to here, take the breakdown point, measure down and see where that is. So this one approximately 1830 to 2000, that's like 170 points, right? 1830, 2000. That, that's going to give us a fairly low price pattern target on this. Um, and then you have to see how that lines up with whatever else is going on to see how what the likelihood of that playing out is. But everything's bearish here. It's bearish on this time frame. It's bearish on the longer term time uh, on the hourly. It's bearish on the daily. On the weekly, we're coming into support levels that um, are fairly likely to hold. Realistically, this might come down as low as these swing lows, like around 1700. I wouldn't expect anything more than that out of the Russell. It's likely to hold that. Our very long term levels here are like if you go 10 years, for example. This is a very, very substantial area in the Russell right here. And we're just very highly like if we have if we get down here these are these are all bullish trades anything in this level here is extremely would indicate extreme um, probability that we're going to get a bounce and uh, I definitely want to play that bullish down there okay so that's what we have in the Russell our IV is not indicating any sort of a big down move here and when we talk about big down move I'm talking about relative down move. So, for example, if we go into the VIX, it's like, yeah, this is Wednesday. You know, we 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 get a we got a, a an implied volatility shift with, let's see, actually, this is the twenty. Yeah, this is today. So this is Friday, Thursday. This is Wednesday. Um, Wednesday in the VIX, you can see that our implied volatility went up this Thursday. When we were trading, you notice we did have a very large IV shifting our positions. So uh, it actually occurred for a lot of positions, especially in the Russell. Um, we got a, uh, you'll, you'll, you see the implied volatility shift in the sense that you're going to get a big depression in the value of your positions. We saw, saw that come into play right at the end of the day on Wednesday. That's when the market decided it's likely to continue down. And then Thursday, we got a very big shift. And then, of course, um, Friday was relatively calm. We're up a little bit today, uh, coming into this, but, um, this is not like an extreme IV shift and it's not, it doesn't indicate any sort of a market panic. It just, it's still, the IV has been, has been sensing or, or shifting what I would call bullish. And when I say that, I mean that they're not expecting like this explosive down move where we're going to get this major support break and, and the world's coming to an end, at least not yet. But um, again, this is still not overly bearish action in the applied volatility market. If we look at um, our RVX, here, again, we did get a gap up, but we're not up in, you know, we're not like up in here. So we got a bit of a rise of implied volatility, but not terrible. If we look at, we haven't looked at this in a while, actually, but if we look at our product depth, up on the SPX, for example, and we go to our on demand, and I go back into <clears throat> last Friday, and we take a look at get rid of this. We just kind of take a look at a month lease for now. <clears throat> The asset price is uh, 4332. The pink is the October, the blues the November. The market's still in contango. Okay. In other words, our October implied volatility at the money is lower than our implied volatility at the money at um, in November. That tends to be more of a bullish indicator than a bearish indicator. Implied volatility skew curves here um, are relatively normal. In other words, they're not like for a freaked out marketplace. 
a freaked out marketplace kind of looks like this, which in the short term, this would have freaked us out, right? Um, like to say, if I go to September 25th, maybe here. Uh, actually, no, the, even this is, this is normal, right? So this is, this would be this, what expired today. This is expiring on the 20th of October and that's November. So this is a pretty, uh, what I would call a not bearish implied volatility skew curve environment. So there's, there's no panic in this move. Traders are trading it down, but they're not, the institutions aren't panicking. They're not, they're not going crazy, um, but protecting and so forth. And you can even see that on, if you come into escape out of this, if you come into here and look at our horizontal skew, for example, and I go into we'll look at the fifteenth. And we'll look at the 22nd, which was the Friday. And then we can overlap them, but you know, look at them by themselves. This is irrelevant because it's coming into expiration. This is our monthly cycle for October. This is our monthly cycle for November. We're in contango, 4%. Implied volatility is relatively low. Um, this, there's no indication in the applied volatility market that there's a big problem here. The market might be going down, but there's no indication of a big problem, um, in the horizontal or the vertical skew curves at this point. And that our horizontal, it can't, our implied volatility came up a little bit, but we're still in contango in the marketplace. December tends to be a quiet month. So they're doing that. They're concerned about next year. You can see there's some concern coming in the market about next year, which is, which is um, potentially an issue. It doesn't look like they're all that concerned this year. Okay. If we overlap these and you can see that there is some concern coming into the market for, um, for next year and a little bit of longer term concern coming in, but it's not like freaking out yet. Um, so again, concern still, I, you know, I have to favor an applied vol. I have to favor the bullish side with the implied volatility. It's not like freaking out yet. So, um, that's what we have there. And that's pretty much everything. So maybe a little bit down pressure in the short term, um, longer term, I'm still expecting some sort of a reversal into whole range. So back to questions here. We go back to the SPX. Why was go back to the SPX? Why did I expect? Let me just clear this out. A continued down move on on Thursday. This is. If you look at this here, this is mid range on this asset. It's like right here, right? We have, I'm comparing my rel, my average of my swing highs with my average of my swing low, which actually ended up being here. This tried to hold here, this broke down. So this is our lower range. This is our upper range. This is our decision point. We tried to break down on Wednesday, but we held, put in a bullish candle. Price action from that point should be, realistically, any close should not go underneath this candle. So if I'm looking at like basic directional trading principles, I might take a long trade off of this candle, right? Because this is kind of my support zone. It's told me, the candle, the bullish action, the candle tells me that the market wants to go up. Um, what cancels that out? Cancel. What cancels that out is a close below that. And this is the close below that, which also happens to be a decisive break of this mid-level, which means we're very likely coming down to the lower level. And 
use zoom in again. And if I just did a price pattern target off of the upper range versus the lower range, that puts us basically to right here. So one of the things I want to recognize is my, and this is interesting too. So I'm just looking at this live as we're going along, right? So this is an interesting thing. So we have this and we have this. So these are our two likely levels. Let me put this one in like orange or something. Or blue. Blue's nice. Okay, so this is how our range is playing out. This is our primary upper and lower range. Um, upper range is obviously lower than lower range. This was the pattern immediately before breakdown. That gives us a very likely move with this point down into here. This is um, a larger pattern here. and also gives us a price pattern target here at 42.73 uh, from this perspective, right? Because we can look at TA in a lot of different perspectives. But either way, this candle here, it, we want to expect a minimal move to here and a possible move to here on the uh, based on essentially just the normal range of the marketplace. Okay, so um, this candle here is puts the, I mean, we don't know for sure, right? The markets can't come in and they could buy this the next day, in which case if they do that, that gives us another change in signal. Um, and sometimes we get that. Sometimes we get a chop range in the marketplace and that plays out. But I don't see this as a chop range. I see this as a clear uh, breakdown. Uh, again, not only that is we had in our shorter charm, we did have a price pattern target that broke to the downside on this day. Again, I may not take that that seriously, but I take this one very seriously and a very high likelihood that we're coming down to at least here, which we did. And it looks like we might try again, come to try to come down a little bit lower, which is, which is expected in many different ways. If you notice, we looked at a lot of different, we looked at the market from a lot of different perspectives. Longer term, shorter term, diagonal lines, uh, and so forth. Implied volatility. We looked at a lot of different manners. This day here, we, we had the implied volatility shift. We had the breakdown of, a, of the way it looks that way. We had the breakdown of the center of our range. All that implies the market's going to continue down. Um, one or two things can happen there, right? We could come back up and retest and go down, uh, or we could just gap down based on how they traded the end of the day. Like if you look at this, the end of the day, like if I want a five minute chart, for example, end of the day, they traded this down really, really hard. And below the area here, and you do notice, right? So the patterns are the same. You do notice that we tried to, to bounce up a little bit here towards, actually, no, this is, that's not the day. The day is here, right? So five day, five minute. I'll go to the day. The day was the um, 20th. Five day, 15 minutes. You'll notice the end of the day, they traded this. This must be the 20th right here. Um, they traded this down pretty hard. And this was a very hard, decisive break of our support level that we had indicating we're probably going down um, the following day and it's likely to continue down. Okay, so that answers that. And <clears throat> uh, question, and I have to get off soon because we have to get on our other meeting, but uh, friend of the curve looks flattened, more volatility ahead short term. Yep. Yeah. So you can, you can, you can say that. Uh, of course, you got to remember too that the, the implied volatility skew curve is flattened the most before it reverses and goes the other direction. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's in the short term. The short term patterns are, are bearish, although we're coming into a longer term bullish area. So we're kind of like in a wait and see mode of, you know, my thought is yes, this is going to bottom out and reverse the other way. Exactly where we're, it's hard to tell at this point. And then um, why would I think? Why would you think it would go in one day? Is the gap an indication? Is there a framework to explain range extension? I don't actually know the context of that question. So, um, 
I'm sorry about that. I, 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 I'm not sure the context here uh, with this here. I don't know that this is going to go down here in one day necessarily, uh, but this is bearish and we're likely to come down into this range. So, so whether it goes there in one day or not, you know, we can look at that intraday as things happen and we can, we can make our inferences in, intraday. I think if you look at the open here on Thursday, let's see here. This is the Wednesday. This is the open on Thursday. This was just a big gap down. So a lot of you know I've been positioned a certain way at the close. So uh, a lot of times, like if I have this set up here, uh, I'm short basically on this candle, 15.30. And my expectation is to hold my short position unless uh, I break back up over the slow or and close on whatever time frame I'm looking at. Um, or we get some sort of a reversal signal. So, you know, the market may have, I may have gone short here and the market may have come up here. I have to consider that within my stop range, right? In other words, I have to allow that kind of flexibility in the marketplace. But the most likely move, given the power of this down move and the break of this low, which was my, um, on my, uh, was my hammer, right? So on my longer term daily chart, this was my hammer uh, pattern that I played out, I believe, if I go back and look at that, we got a strong break underneath that. I mean, the gap down here is highly probable. Um, and exactly, you know, how far down it's going to go in one day, we don't necessarily know. But I have to be bearish off of this candle here. And I can play that out. And you can see here, now we've set in, you know, a downtrend. And we can look for reversals to the upside. So this is one of the things that we'll look for as far as reversals go. We have a downtrend here. Um, I'm looking for this to break to the upside, this downtrend line, and then hold it uh, on the other side. So hopefully that can do that. Okay. Um, all right. Thank you very much, everybody, and for joining me. And we'll see you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you to our special guests for the market outlook. Hope you consider joining us. Make a big improvement to your trading. And uh, for everybody else, we'll see you on the Go meeting in about five minutes. Have a great week, everybody, and trade well.